No, but w w what am I saying that's untrue? Americans gave away $500 billion to charity last year, voluntarily. We've taken half of the world's immigrants, half. Do you know how those trusts work? No. Do you know that only 5% of the money that you put into a nonprofit or a charity even has to be used? So mo is more than they make on interest, you realize. So mo most charities and most foundations will use 90 plus percent of the, the net assets they get every single year. So what? what? No, you can look at the IRS. You can look at the IRS website. I understand what I'm saying might bother you, but we're also the most accepting, least racist, most diverse, multiracial country in the world by far. We've been in. Okay, how? Look at the United. We take in half the world's immigrants every single year. I go to Portland to melt snowflakes. Okay, this is by Charlie Cook. I call Charlie Kick. We go look at us. Let's get right into this video. America is the greatest country ever to exist. Not even close. What what country would you say is the greatest? Most productive, most accepting, most generous, most benevolent. Yes, we take in half the world's immigrants every single year. True. How is this not accepted? What does that have to do about not being accepted? Who are you? My name is Charlie Kirk, and I love America. Because I love talking with people I disagree with. What have you done for your country? started an organization that's now in a thousand plus campuses to save the greatest culture and country ever to exist. Hires vets. And hires vets. And hires vets. And I've had thousands of hours of conversation about these ideas. Is it necessary? Well, considering I've been assaulted, followed, stalked, and had things thrown at me, the greatest protection I have is cameras. It's a public space. Okay. One, one second, I want to wrap this up. It's, it's all good. But what country would you say is greater than this one? Well, I just said, I mean, we take in half. Your definition of great? I mean, we are the... Can you say that the United States of America has always done, the, has always made the greatest decision? Because nobody's perfect, right? No, I never said America was a perfect country, ever. Nor have we, we've made a lot of mistakes. Has done anything great? No, 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 no. That's not what I've said. Then, what, why do you go to that extreme? Because from an objective analysis. Objective analysis. Correct. A world history. Um, hello, how are you? Yeah, 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 exactly. We are the most creative, the most accepting, the most benevolent, the most generous, most forward thinking and productive country ever to exist. We are a country that sent 37,000 of our own citizens to die on the Korean Peninsula so South Korea could exist, and we asked for nothing in return. Mm -hmm. No country's ever done anything close to that. We sent What's a mil- education from? Reading history. Reading history. What did I, how is that not true what I just said? Reading what history? What kind of bias stuff No, but w what am I saying that's untrue? Americans gave away $500 billion to charity last year, voluntarily. We've taken half of the world's immigrants, half. Do you know how those trusts work? No. Do you know that only 5% of the money that you put into a nonprofit or a charity even has to be used? So mo is more than they make on interest, you realize. So mo most charities and most foundations will use 90 plus percent of the, the net assets they get every single year. So what? what? Is that any facts you? No, you can, look at the IR you can look at the IRS website. I understand what I'm saying might bother you. But we're also the most accepting, least racist, most diverse, multiracial country in the world, by far. We've been in... Okay, how? Look at the United... We've taken half the world's immigrants every single year. So... Most America's not living in poverty. Yes, really. We're the richest country in the world, by far. We have an American middle class as a uniquely American concept. You ever walk down the street and see all the homeless people? Excuse me, I grew up in a gang, gang-infested neighborhood. So you want to talk to poor people? I'm talking, and we're talking to you from a perspective of people that have experienced. You, you, you know that America's poor are actually in the richest one percent in the world. A remarkable amount. The richest one percent of what? Of people in the world. No, what I'm saying is that a very poor person in America is relatively extraordinarily rich by world standards. Yes. Because they have access to air conditioning, medical care, cable television, Wi-Fi, transportation. Access to medical care? 
uh, 90 so plus percent. What is Medicaid? Health? Tell me what Medicaid is. Medicaid. 45 million poor Americans, Americans have access to health care through a Medicaid. They can't reach the median level of income, but they can't afford their medical bills. They can, they can go on Medicaid. That's Here's what Medicaid is for. How many people are on Medicaid? How many? 45 million. We have okay. a safety net for poor people. It's called Medicaid. Okay. Run by state exchanges. In Oregon? Because yes, the well, that's because of a Democrat governor and a Democrat mayor and a Democrat supermajority in the House and the Senate. You show me an American ghetto, I'll show you a Democrat in control. Philadelphia, Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland. The prosperous states, the states you that. Blame Democrats? Yes. Yes, there hasn't been a Democrat governor of Oregon since 1982. I mean, a Republican governor of Oregon since 1982. Is that a great time? Is 1982 a great time? Why is it surprising? Republican, Democrat. You know anything about progressives? Because Republicans generally. What about progressive? What what is what is? About you mean party? socialists or Marxists? Socialists? Are you gonna call me a communist? Next I'll time? call you a Marxist. Yeah, yeah. About anything outside of your bubble? What do you think about Karl Marx? Karl Marx. Karl Marx. Bingo. <laughs> yeah, I mean he, he 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 is the author of basically everything the progressive movement believes. Karl Marx wrote the Communist Manifesto. Have you? Because the progressives argue for everything that is democratic socialism. So Bernie Sanders, who is the criminal justice reform, I believe in criminal justice reform. You and I could agree with that. Do you do you believe in free education? I mean, it depends. Is it state education? Do you believe? I mean, are you talking about private education? Do you believe? Where do you draw the lines? I mean, high school education is free, right? No, it's not. You pay property taxes. It's far from free. You pay a lot more in property taxes than you'll ever get out of your local high school education. Nothing is free. Everything is paid for by somebody at some point. True. The most prosperous parts of the world and in this country are more in more center-right conservative Republican leadership. Thank you for the conversation. You want to talk? Uh, just trying to read your shirt. Oh, it says U.S. Border Patrol. Oh, no, you, uh, <laughs> yeah, I get everything you're about. Like, My? What, what am I about? Tell me. I'm about the rule of law. Can you read it? The woman's place is in the House and Senate. Yeah, I agree. Strong, smart sisters are a strength. Yep, there you go. Conservative ones, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I hear that. Yes. <laughs> and this this beta production over here on the side is hearing every word coming out of your mouth. Projection is a powerful what? thing. Yeah. So is truth. When they said I was gay in high school, I learned so much about them later on, about what they were afraid of and what was going on. By all means, continue, because I love everything that comes out of your mouth. I learn every, everything I need to know from, from whatever they're projecting. It could be anything. You're dumb, you're ugly, whatever. I am very, very much, in a made sense, appreciating what you're doing. Likewise because civil discourse is extremely important. No, I, I totally you know, agree with that. The, the, the right saying, this is my Bible and that's it. And the left saying, no, no, we're right and you're gonna listen to us. Neither one of them's right. Oh, neither one? Neither one is right, no, no. Because, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. If I give you John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. life. Yep. How many people that know that can give me John 3, 17? Because when I was in English class, you had to actually have context. Like, I'll give you a good example of context. Judas went and hanged himself. Jesus said, go ye and do likewise. <laughs> so what is John 3.17? You tell me. No, I'm pissed off that nobody effing knows. What's John 1.1, 1, 1, biblical scholar? F you too. Oh, okay. For first oh, there I was see the you word. Ate one too. For first oh, there I was see the you word, and too. the word was God. And the For God the Son of Man came into the world not to condemn the world, me, all of you, me, but that the world through it might be saved, dude. Might be saved. They're going off a cliff into a fire, and no, no, you're going to figure this shit out because we told you, mother. You know, the only time that Jesus got violent. Was with when, money changers, yeah, when they were with the people the that were making money off the people of God, which is what our theology today is based upon. What's the parable? It's capitalism. What's the parable? It's of the, the American way. What's Thank the, you, God. What's the parable of the talents? The parable of the talents. Use it or lose it. Oh, so isn't that if what capitalism encourages? If you bury your encourages? talent, 
Isn't that what a free market encourages? Production, reinvestment? Yeah, and copyright and trademark, and you're not going to do it because we got there first and you're staying the hell out. Well, Jesus believed in private property rights. That's why he said, render under Caesar what is Caesar's. Mm -hmm. Right? So was That's right. I don't owe you a penny. Correct. And I, wouldn't, I owe you my love. I wouldn't I owe you my you. love. I owe my caring for you, uh, as a fellow human being. It's called agape. The love that yes. put Jesus on the cross. Correct. Love, love because for me. I have a beautiful sister here, but erotic isn't the first thing that comes to mind. Sister is. Oh. Phileo. The Greek word in the Bible, phileo. Strong, smart sister. That's the first thing that comes into my mind. But I had to get past my dirty 30s 20 years before I could do that. I'm just a dirty hippie freak, don't mind me. No, I didn't say that. Nor do I think it. It's not UHF, it's DHF, the Dirty Hippie Freak Show. Five years on YouTube, three years making money with it, my second Black Skull Carnival. Love is the answer, ladies and gentlemen. Salam alaikum. Anshallah, which Namaste. means what? Go with God. Let there be love. Thanks. Nothing we're saying is against love. We love oh, this country. Fruit, you shall know that. Correct. Blessed are the poor, so they shall inherit the earth. So explain to me then the, so the, how, the, 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 the how are you, the is it helping? <laughs> kind of uh, okay, so, so for, for, first and foremost, no children were caged so under this administration. They were caged under the Obama administration. <laughs> no, I didn't ask that question. You obviously just turned it into a political thing, pushing it on Obama. You avoided the question okay, and pointed so, the finger at Obama. I didn't ask no, if Trump did it. You, you said child I asked, caging. are they in there? They're, yes not, they're no? not in cages. They're not. They're not in prisons right now. They're not in prisons, no. They're not being held. They're being separated from the people that brought them across the southern border. And you were blaming this on Obama. Why? Again, Why? you used caging. There's Why? no one in cages right I'm now. I'm sorry. I asked a question and you deferred to Obama. Because he was I the only president that put children in cages. Trump did not. You're getting, getting really upset, aren't you? So ask, let me ask a question. What, what agency goes after child sex traffickers most vehement? According to you, it's ICE. And according to all independent audits as well. All of them. Yeah. All or nothing is a fallacy. Well, there's no one that has found that to be untrue. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll make sure to investigate that myself. Yeah. I, so I find it very telling that you get so angry so quickly. No, I did get angry. got assertive. Yes, you assertive? Oh, that's called assertive. It's very interesting. Do, I'm, do I'm you, curious about the deflection to Obama when I didn't even bring up Trump. No, you brought up cages, and there's only one president where kids were in cages. So that that's brand new, huh? That's never happened before. I'm not sure. What you, I'm not sure what the question is. So, you're not sure what the question is meaning that this guy is trying to be tricky. Except between 2008 and do, 2000. Do you, do you think that we should test? 16? Do you think that we should test when someone brings someone I across the border whether or not that it's their parents or not? Do you think we should ask? Do you think we should test? Test? Yeah, in case that they are being child trafficked across the border. Well, if they're being trafficked across the border, it's because we're bringing them in. What do you mean by what? How are why we would bringing... they, Why would they be... Well, you didn't answer my question. You avoided my question. No, I asked the question in return. Yeah, by asking a question, you avoided my question. That's a tactic. That's a male-dominant tactic. Male, what does is, what is having being a male have to do with anything? I mean, you're, you're issuing it right now. What do you mean? Yeah, let me explain. When you're here presenting to us, right? And someone asks you a question, and in a very political way, you deflect the question with a question. You didn't answer the question. So basically, you've got nothing to say except I got political a lot rhetoric. To say. I got a lot to say. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Such as our president's doing an extraordinary job. Lowest ever Hispanic unemployment rate, lowest ever black unemployment rate. So this is uh, tens of thousands this is of a child political sex statement for Donald Trump. Being then. arrested. Well, I love it. I love You the are here making a Trump Am I? This is a pro Trump speech for you. This has nothing to do with genders well, it has or a lot. children. I'll talk about it. You're sitting you want here to talk telling about. me how much a, you love thank Trump. Thank you. Have a great day. God bless you. I'll pray for you. Oh my goodness. That will help a lot. Prayer, will... prayer is a powerful thing. Yes, it is. It has done horrendous things to this planet. Prayer has done horrendous things to this it planet. It has. Through Christianity and through a lot of other religions. Oh, Narrow-minded religions have caused a lot of pain and suffering on this planet. More people have died over the last 100 years under the guise of Marxism and statism than any other ideology. Not even close. More people have 100 died. 100 million people died under communism in the last 100 years. Mm -hmm. 100 million. Yeah, 60 in uh, Mao's China, mm -hmm. 30 in Stalin's Russia, I'm 2 million in Pol Pot's Cambodia, at least 200,000 in Cuba. I can keep going. I'm not preaching communism here. 
No, but I'm saying anything. more You're people have died under me sadism. You're nothing about children. You're telling me how much you support oh. Trump and, and, and how much communism I'll talk sucks. about whatever you want to talk about. I, it's your conversation. So what do you I believe? I believe that there's a remedy to situations and not a political battle. I believe that if we work together and open our minds instead of militarizing ourselves, we could come up with a solution. Isn't talking how we come to solutions? Sure, but getting mad and making political stances on who you love and what the president's doing is so great and what no. the communists are doing so bad is not a conversation. It's a statement. Well, I'll have a, a conversation when I didn't have Awesome. Maybe we could have a conversation in the history building sometime. About what? Maybe we could have a conversation in the history building sometime. Yes, An history will, conversation history will tell us that when government grows too big, people suffer and die. Yes. That's what the history building should tell you. History will also tell history you that we, should tell history us will also exists. tell us we live in the greatest country ever to exist. History will also tell you that Western civilization is the greatest miracle that humans ever created. Western history will tell you that. Any history will tell you that. Western history will tell you that. T tell me any history is a false. I have to be in class, so I would really love to continue. This. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. The first guy was talking about the immigration aspect. He's he's just pissed that Charlie is talking about the uh, regulation for mass immigration. Like we all know, mass immigration is a very 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 serious topic and something we should look into in America. I don't know why the first guy was kind of like pissed. And America is the greatest country in the entire world. And uh, people accept it or not is one of the greatest. I will use the word one of the greatest. I don't just say the greatest, but one of the greatest country in the entire world. And the most acceptable. Like they accept all foreigners. In respect of where you come from or who you are, or they accept every single one. America has turned into a colony. So I don't know what people are always talking about. America is not one of the greatest countries in the world. They're one of the greatest countries in the world. And people are always attacking Charlie because Charlie keep on saying the truth. And the truth is bitter. And people just don't want to test it. <laughs> that, is it. that is it. Then the second guy who was talking about Christianity as a whole, at first he was actually confusing me. Sometimes it will make sense. The other time it won't make sense. So it's kind of like confusing me in a bit. But I see his point of view about give what to Caesar to Caesar, about relating to what's happening with Jesus Christ and what's happening now in a capitalist country. Some of the words right there make sense. Um, also, the last guy who was there, who was the last guy was kind of like, let me use the word, hostile, because he brought out politics and Charlie went with him, with the politics scenario. Ch Charlie's own is that, bring any topic, and I will answer you. Charlie's talking about gender right there. There are only two gender. That is his main purpose right there. But Charlie's open for any other conversation. That is the beautiful thing that Charlie did right there. He's open for any other conversation. So the, the guy right there with the earring and the glasses, with the leather jacket, he came straight at Charlie with political scenarios, political agendas. So... Charlie went with him with the same energy he gave to Charlie. And he was saying that Charlie is just campaigning for Trump. We all know Charlie li loves Trump. Me too. I I'm a supporter of Trump. But Charlie's main purpose right there was to talk about the two gender aspects. Because America as a whole right now, they believe in over 100 genders. So his main purpose, I've watched clips of Charlie debating other students about the only two genders, the only two genders in this same scenario. So the guy right there came to Charlie with the impression of political agenda, political discussions. And Charlie went with him in the same energy, in the same vibe. And the guy is just turning the scenario about against Charlie. This guy right there is a hostile guy. Like, he, I don't know him from anywhere, but by his way of speaking, he is... Everything about him, the way he approached and the way he feels like to talk, it brings that hostileness to life. This was beautiful. I love how Charlie handled the entire students. Calmly and precise. And he was not harsh. He was not discriminating. He didn't, he didn't chase anyone irrespective of how you answered him or how you talked to him. 
he was not seeing anything bad towards them. And he was setting facts. And all Charlie's facts right here can be backed by research. If you go research each word he said right here, you will see proof. Like the tax aspect of the IRS, the money US give to um less privilege, your offense. You see it right there. You see proof. And secondly, Charles used the word there is nothing free. It's been paid by someone. Free education. It's not free. It's been paid by someone. There is nothing free. This entire video was beautiful to watch and I enjoyed it. And I love how Charlie handled every single one of them. Comment down below, think about this video, give us a thumbs up, share this video to us, main Instagram, subscribe to our channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking, I don't own papers, pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku,